everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the Terminator Great Day. Today is gonna be a very exciting one because we've got two incredible fries with us today. And firstly, the brand new, just recently revived version of the 48, the all new F8 Tributo. And in this video, we're gonna go over this car, see how it drives, and then find out how it compares against the race inspired, actually literally meaning on track, the Pista, given that they share the same motors. And this thing takes the 48 was and brings it up a level. I mean, 50 more horsepower, the same engine as the Pista. So this car, it's got the racing drive, most powerful um, combustion V8 motor from Ferrari that is not, you know, paired with electronics, that being electric motors. This car has 710 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque. And they come from my attitude. I mean, my McLaren has 592 horsepower, so I cannot wait to see how this 3.9 liter twin turboed Ferrari V8 actually feels in comparison. As you can see, a lot of the elements on this car are actually taken straight from the Pista right behind me. Right away, that being the S-duct, which provides more front-end downforce over that front axle. So on track and also on high-speed corners, you're really gonna notice the effect. So the air gets grabbed way down above the front splitter and then morphed all the way up here over the other frunk. And yes, you actually still have a frunk in this car despite an implemented air duct. Also, moving around, you'll see a few other things that are pretty interesting. So right away, you've got the same headlight design, sort of, as the 488, but this time around, if you look at that car behind me, and this one right here, the entire top section of the headlights have been removed. This provides for, for extra cooling for the front brake. So air travels all throughout the front end of the car above the headlights, and then, as you can see, walking this way, help cool and relieve pressure out of the front wheel wells. So this entire car is designed for you to have fun on the street then also the racetrack and in my opinion seeing the design of this car i'm a major fan of the, the 488 to me it was a nice car it looked good but to me the f8 just brings it up a level to what i personally feel is a ferrari this car looks aggressive doesn't it and it's got all the horsepower numbers to back it up because you got to realize the 488 it had a hard time competing against cars like the 720s that car had 710 horsepower and it'll add accelerate it in real in the environment. So um, I think McLaren has done a little bit of pushing towards uh, Ferrari for them to come out with this beast right here. But altogether though, if you really look around it, it's not a completely fundamental reworking of, of the 488. It's not a new platform. It still shares the same aluminum space frame construction. However, the, the actual air ducts on the sides are a bit different. You've got a new fin that completely cuts the airflow from the bottom to the top. Also, these air vanes help to cool the engine. One of the most notable differences between this and the 48 is this new rear wing in the back, which helps with the airflow above the engine because it kind of morphs into what the, the Pista is. So also coming towards the rear, you're going to notice a brand new tail end that implements these amazing, amazing grills all over the place to help bring out some of the air. And you also have floating vents right here behind the wheels. You can't see it, but this, the air relieves out of the pressure out of the back wheel wells, and then goes out of this vein right here. Also, so we have engine cooling going on. And my favorite part about the rear end of this car are the quad taillights. So, so instead of one single circle out back like the 488, we've got two on either side in this really nice blended in rear wing. So in total, this car, it's one of those things where over each um, year, Ferrari's noticing, well, what can we rework and improve over the 488? And uh, I think this car is the uh, reincarnation of the 488 but keep in mind the extra power for it to be able to compete with cars like the 720s and another thing that I love about this car is this huge huge rear window in the back which reminds me of the f40 with these vents built right in and then there you have the same engine as the 48 pista all together with the Incanel exhaust I mean I'm told that this Ferrari v8 doesn't sound like a normal twin turbo car. And I cannot wait to actually find out how it feels. So you know what, let's go hop inside the interior, go over what the car has, and then see how it drives. And real quickly though, you'll notice one other thing. This car does use carbon ceramics like the 48 did. However, however, you can opt for cup twos and with the piece that's got the cup two Rs. So this is so in general with this carbon ceramic brake stopping power, I think on track, 
the car is going to really, really come alive. We've got to be honest, most people who buy these cars will not track them or drive them hard. But um, today, being next to the mountains and canyons here in Malibu, it should be a good, good environment. You get a good feel for how the entire car comes together, the, the dynamics, the way it drives. Is this car really worth the $300,000 price tag? So hopping inside the FA Tributo, I'll be honest with you, when I was first hearing about this car, I was considering getting one over the 600 LT I bought. However, I just didn't find a really good deal available on one because the used prices on these cars are going up. So what's nice about buying a Ferrari is that I, I'm pretty sure you can hold at least a good portion of your value at this time being for the market. But I'm closing the doors, as you can see. This is a very, very special place to be in, especially with this steering wheel. Altogether, the entire cockpit, you can tell how, well, it's based on the 480A. It's got similar to design cues here and there, but it's all been just refreshed. It's kind of like the refresh that you saw with the AMG, the AMG GT. We have new tech all around through the interior. So, so first and foremost, what you really notice right away is that you have brand new air vents all throughout the interior, which instead of blending in more with the body of the car, the dashboard, You've got these gigantic circles that actually they move very freely and they feel very good to move around. Um, high quality it feels like, but in general the air conditioning now, you have circle vents all throughout and a much better brand new design for the, the climate control system. So instead of having so many uh, uh, spin dials and switches down here, it's all more seamless and streamlined. Plus you have an LCD right above that telling you what kind of air climate controls you have set on. I, I love how Bobby opted for, for this interior combo though with the red stitch and the red Alcantara. It comes together very nicely, especially with these bucket seats. I'm told they cost $18,000. So um, it's a lot of money, but looking at them, it looks almost like a classic Ferrari race car design. The whole thing blends together so well, especially with these rivets and holes built in and the red Alcantara line all throughout. And they hold you in actually pretty well, given they don't have super aggressive side lumbar supports for you to go through each corner. It's one of those things where you can tell how they are carbon backs so in, in general, they do a good job of being lightweight, but also track focused, giving you that extra support you need to uh, go fast. But I love this steering wheel. It just it feels new. The entire design is new and everything that you have on the steering wheel, you can keep your hands on the wheel at all times without moving them elsewhere to uh, change lanes or put on the wipers or even change driving modes. Ferrari has that mentality where you're driving this car and your hands are on the wheel at all times. Even when it comes to, to the paddle shifters, they don't move with the steering wheel. So you got to really keep in mind of where that upshift and downshift buttons are when it comes to like sliding this car around. It's fixed. So in general, I, I feel like Ferrari has really nailed it when it comes to the driver position and feel of holding the steering wheel, seeing this rev counter on top, it's just exciting. You also have this new tunnel design right here and then your hazards. Then down way in the bottom you have your actual window controls and this really uh, weird soft padding piece right in the middle that says Ferrari on top. You know what though? Let's take this thing out for a drive because you're watching this video to find out how it feels. Does it give you the right emotions? Is it worth the money? So uh, let's go out on these mountain back roads and see how it drives. All right, Bobby, you're really excited about this first time in the F8 Tributo. And right away, it does feel surprisingly different. It's very interesting because I wasn't sure how it would feel back to back with the Pista, but um, it does feel much more smooth on the road just driving. Yeah, I can tell this is much more like daily drivable, it feels like. And the way the interior has been refreshed, it, it's, it feels a bit more modern. It feels nice compared to the 488 design, which we've had for a, few, a lot of years now. And then that was even based on the 458. So it's very interesting how they, they kept a similar design for, for so many years. But roll up the windows a bit so I can, I can talk. Um, anyway, so I like how, so your tachometer is finished in black. Can you change that depending on like what options and stuff? It is optional. You can, I mean, order a different color, but this really? one black. I gotcha. So how many options do you have when it comes to the performance side of things with the F8? Is there a lot of things you can do to increase like with tire, um, spec, etc.? I gotcha. I can see the carbon here. It looks very nice. So then to go into a manual mode, is it the same as the piece to just hit automatic? Exactly. Gotcha. It's funny, you get hit automatic, you go in the manual. <laughs> you wouldn't have realized that right away. But um, yeah, it, it feels much more smooth and also the um, the brake response for the carbon ceramics, it has a bit more a bit more bite right away. So how long have you had it? Uh, six, six months, I believe. 
Six months? My seat a bit more. So what made you want to get a Ferrari? The engine? Is that it? The engine. <laughs> wow! It sounds so... Oh my gosh! The sound of this motor sounds unbelievable! So let's get a feel for this thing. And then can I rev it by pulling both paddle shifters? Yeah. So I'll do once get straight over here. Here we go, revving it, the F8. <laughs> what? How is this a twin turbo car, dude? It sounds so good. Oh my gosh. A bit of some bumps. I bet you can catch air in some of these bumps. It just hooks up. <laughs> wow. It's a decreasing radius corner. actually sharpens up a lot in those corners right there it's really really impressive I, I mean the way it comes and then the sound how I cannot stop asking you man how does how is the twin turbo it sounds like an NA This is the same motor out of the Pista, man. It, it feels so similar, but the best way I can say it is that it's not exactly as sharp. The suspension's not as stiff either, but like, I mean, this is the Pista, but much more road friendly. I mean, you can do this all day long. Yeah. Like, this is why you buy this car. I can't, I can't stop smiling, man. The Pista is more race track focus. Yes. But as is though, in, in race mode, this car's got a lot of adjustability built in because I felt earlier how just driving around normally on the highway, it felt composed, but to coming out here, just changing a few settings, the settings here and there, and the whole car adapts to its environment very well. Oh wow, those gear changes. The way Ferrari tunes their DCT, I think it's possibly one of the best out there. But like, it, it's, it gives you a different feeling than the McLarens, honestly. And then getting out of the Pista, the car itself with the engine, it feels very similar to the suspension though. It, it's much more soft in the car. It's less darty left and right. Like you barely turn the steering wheel in the, in the Pista and the whole thing just wraps like, like that. It just turns instantly to the front end. This car, it's got more leeway in it for you to be able to drive more comfor comfortably on the street. And I feel like it may just be even more driver friendly like on the racetrack I in a strange way. The car just evokes nonstop emotion. Let's try to get a bit more throttle right here. Thank you. 
Oh, wow, it picks up and goes just, just like the Pista. How, and this car is even cheaper too. I wonder if you own a Pista, if you're, you're kind of uh, not too happy about this engine being put into the, the now starting base Ferrari that you can get. And then from here, you're gonna see the race spec versions come out in a few years time. feel how suspension itself this is in race mode yeah so it's got a little bit of a slip angle where the tail end will slide out a bit but it, it's very controlled with the onboard computer you can notice that right away so it's not it's not intimidating to drive fast which is that's like the number one thing that they want to make sure they nail for this kind of a car because this is going to be sold to, to much more of the masses part of the pista and being so raw the pista this car strikes such a great balance i think it's a lot of fun wow this thing it comes together so well changing the gear is, it's absolutely seamless the entire time and the noises this car makes I said a million times in this video but I don't know how how this is a twin turbo car and it sounds that good it's so engaging I think I think this is why you buy a Ferrari it makes you just get a smile on your face and you cannot get rid of it it's a very emotional car and you can feel sometimes too how in race mode it does let the tail end slide a tiny bit but it's so controllable that it, it makes having a slip angle like that just fun it's not a scary car to drive fast however though i will say if you get in this car and you don't know what you're doing um i think you'd find yourself in in a lot of trouble very quickly uh, <laughs> but if you know what you're doing this is a very rewarding car to drive Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to uh, hit that like button to help you out. Also, subscribe for much more great uh, supercar content coming your way. I'm honestly, again, super impressed with how this thing performed. The way it sounds, it doesn't sound like any other twin turbo V8 I've ever driven. And to be honest with you, it kind of makes you want to upgrade the, the exhaust on my McLaren. So uh, that shows you how impressive this car really is. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to test it out on track. Anyways, though, thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see all of you in the next episode.